Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, in continuation with the topic of urine analysis, uh, today I will start with the chemical examination of urine and will cover protein urea and briefly chyle urea. So the question is asked that what test do you uh, perform on a urine sample in the chemical examination? So uh, we can test for the proteins, chyle, sugars, then ketone bodies, bilirubin, bile salts, urobilinogen and blood and uh, for a uh, chemical examination uh, we should know that uh, when we get a urine sample then we centrifuge the sample uh, at a rate of 2000 rpm for five minutes and this is uh, often asked in the viva that uh, what do you do with the sediment and what do you do with the supernatant so with the sediment we will uh, perform the microscopic examination because all the cell cast crystals they will be in the uh, the deposits and in the supernatant we can perform all these uh, tests for these chemical constituents so this you should know especially this uh, speed and duration for the centrifuge next we come to the test for proteins so the uh, question is asked that enumerate the various tests which are done to detect the protein urea so most important is heat and acetic acid test which uh, we perform in the exam also and then sulfosalicylic acid test, Heller's test, then urine dipsticks. So urine dipsticks they are commercially available in the market and they are impregnated with the chemical tetra bromo phenol blue and when the protein uh, interacts with this chemical then the color changes are seen as from yellow to green to blue depending on the content of protein in the urine. So the name of these tests you should know and these tests they are mainly detecting the proteins mainly albumin and, uh, and the next question that is asked is what is the normal range for protein urea so uh, it is less than 150 milligrams protein per day so up to 150 milligram protein uh, can be excreted in the urine more than that is abnormal uh, next we come to the most commonly asked test in the exam that is the heat and acetic acid test uh, so but the principle of this test is that the proteins they are uh, denatured and coagulated when they are heated and then they give a cloudy precipitate and this occurs at a acidic pH so uh, before performing the test we should check the pH and if it is coming as alkaline then we should make it acidic by adding the few drops of glacial acetic acid and because in acidic urine these proteins they will precipitate upon heating so next we proceed to the part of heating so we fill the test tube with uh, two third uh, of the test tube we fill with the urine and then we heat it in the upper part and not in the lower part because the lower part it acts as a control and we can compare our results with the lower part so uh, this is a question which is asked that why you heat only the upper part so this is the reason so when we heat it then white precipitate if white precipitate we are able to see then it can be due to phosphates so this is false positive and it can be due to protein which is true positive so how to differentiate between these two we add a uh, few drops of 10% glacial acetic acid drop by drop if the precipitate disappears then it is because of uh, it was because of phosphates because the phosphates they uh, they will uh, precipitate only at a alkaline ph so if we adding acetic acid then they will disappear and if this precipitate persists then it is because of protein so this is uh, very commonly asked in the exam so if there is white precipitate it indicates presence of uh, phosphates, uh, phosphates, carbonates as well as proteins. So to differentiate we will add few drops of glacial acetic acid and this concentration is also asked this is 10% and if the precipitate persists then we can say that the protein is present because the since the acetic acid it dissolves the carbonates and phosphates so only protein is left. Next we come to the very important part that is grading. Uh, so it comes in the interpretation of the result of the heat and acetic acid test. So uh, if there is no change on heating then we count it as negative. If there is uh, haziness then it is traces. 
If white cloudiness is present, then we give as one plus. If granular white precipitate is, it is two plus. Then if flocules, that is more, they the granules they combine to form the flocules, which are thicker and coarser, and this is three plus. And if there is thick white opaque precipitate in the test tube, then we count as it uh, as four plus. And also we can tell about the cons concentration. If there is white cloudiness. then it is less than 0.1 percent if granular ppt is there then it is 0.12 or uh, 0.25 percent then in flocular ppt it is 0.25 to 0.5 percent and uh, in 4 plus it is more than 0.5 percent so this is very important to remember in very commonly asked in the viva and you can uh, also use this mnemonic to learn it so no homework given for today so the first alphabet that we give you the clue for the precipitate that is no change haziness then white cloudiness granular flocular and thick white so this is the interpretation and uh, this is the negative absent then traces there is white cloudiness then 1 plus this is 2 plus so granular then flocules 3 plus and 4 plus is thick white precipitate so this you should learn by heart the other test which are used are sulfosalicylic acid test where we uh, use the sulfosalicylic acid solution it consists of sulfosalicylic acid then also contains magnesium sulfate and sodium sulfate so we just add 2.5 ml Uh, sulfosalicylic acid uh, over 2.5 ml of urine so we we mix both in equal quantities and then white uh, white cloudy precipitate will indicate the presence of proteins and uh, this uh, other test is heller's test in which we use the concentrated nitric acid so few drops they are poured from the side of the tube over a uh, sample of urine So we take five ml urine and add few drops uh, of concentrated nitric acid over from the side, and then a white ring will be formed at the junction of acid and urine if the proteins are present. So you should remember a little bit about these tests also. Next uh, important question is then how we will do the quantitative uh, protein estimation. So uh, in that the examiner often asked about the Asbex albuminometer. so this is the instrument is also kept in the instrument table this bags albuminometer it has got this graduated tube uh, having marks up to 12 then there are two unique marks one is u another is r so till u we fill the urine and till r we fill the reagent and what is the reagent the reagent is composed of citric acid and picric acid so this is mixed in uh, bo- distilled water then it is boiled then cool and the reagent is made up to 100 ml so this is how the asbex reagent are made they commonly asked ask what are the constituents of the asbex asbex reagent and what what is the use so it is used for estimation of protein urea in a 24 hour urine sample now uh, what is the method for this uh, first we check the ph make make sure that it is acidic then we fill uh, asbex albuminometer with urine up to the mark u then we add the asbex reagent up to the mark r we mix it keep it for 24 hours then the white protein is present then white precipitate is formed and the thickness we measure and the result is uh, interpreted in gram per liters so uh, this is how we estimate the uh, protein quantitatively in a 24 hour urine sample and you should remember the asbex reagent consist of picric acid and citric acid so this is important now uh, next very 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 important is the uh, list of conditions that lead to protein urea now there are certain conditions in which there is uh, protein urea for a transient period it generally subsides so can be seen in fever in heavy exercise and then there is orthostatic protein urea This is orthostatic protein urea. Is protein urea having a unknown cause in which 
the person has put in urea when he is uh, he or she is standing for prolonged hours like traffic police they stand for prolonged hours and they have protein urea when they are standing but when they are lying down then they don't have protein urea this is known as orthostatic protein urea and this is also commonly asked question then uh, in the kidney diseases there will be more protein urea than in these above conditions so in kidney diseases what are the diseases that come chronic glomerulonephritis then nephrotic syndrome uh, in nephrotic syndrome there is nephrotic range protein urea again this is asked in asked and it is three, more than 3.5 grams protein in a 24 hour urine sample this figure you should remember then nephrotic syndrome will lead to protein urea renal tuberculosis renal vein thrombosis hypertensive nephropathy diabetic nephropathy lupus nephritis so all these are the causes of protein urea so ye, this list you uh, have to remember by heart this is all, always asked in the exam now next the next question that is asked is what are the benz jones proteins so till now we were studying about the detection of proteins mainly that was uh, detecting the albumin and these are the benz jones protein these are the light chains gamma globulins so these globulins they are excreted in the urine in cases of plasma cell dyscrasias like multiple myeloma Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia so gamma and lambda chains they can be excreted in urine uh, more commonly than the heavy chains and how do we detect these proteins by the thermal method so we uh, use a water bath because there we can regulate the temperature the important feature of these proteins is that they precipitate uh, at a temperature between 40 to 60 degrees celsius and when you heat it further then they dissolve and the precipitate will disappear at about 100 degrees celsius then again when we cool it then this precipitate will again appear at around 60 degrees so when this phenomena occurs then we can conclude that these are the benz jones protein sometimes the precipitate occurring at 40 to 60 degrees celsius then at 70 to 80 degrees celsius if the protein if the precipitate is persisting we can it can be because of the nuisance then we filter the that urine and again we proceed we heat it to 100 degrees celsius then again cool it so the benz jones protein will again re reappear between 40 to 60 degrees celsius so you just remember that these proteins they precipitate at this temperature at 100 degrees celsius they go off and then we again when we cool it they will appear again at this temperature this you should remember and for benz jones protein the preferable method for detection is Immunoelectrophoresis. So, benzoin proteins, they are the light chain proteins. They are often uh, the examiner asked, what are they? Light chain proteins, they are uh, generally seen in plasma cell dyscrasias like multiple myeloma. And what are they? Are kappa and lambda chains. Now, next uh, important question is what is microalbuminuria? So, uh, the albumin, this protein is the uh, most common component of the urinary protein. Uh, and it should be uh, less than 30 milligrams per day so if its value is between 30 to 300 milligram per day al albumin then we call it micro albuminuria why it is important because it is the earliest marker for the uh, diabetic nephropathy when the diabetes is involving the kidneys this is the earliest marker and if we detect it er early like in the regular follow-up of a diabetic patient we measure the albumin levels by the suitable methods then we can with proper glycemic control can uh, uh, can control the progression of this nephropathy so uh, uh, secondly it is also a marker for cardiovascular risk in the hypertensive patients so these are the importance of this microalbumin detecting these in urine and uh, the diagnosis can be done by strip method which are sensitive strips so these are uh, other than those strips which i discussed earlier for the proteins these are the micral strips uh, they can come by any commercial name and they are sensitive for detecting the uh, this albumin in small quantities also and other methods are the hplc high performance liquid chromatography radio amino assays and the nephilometric methods so these are also the methods for uh, detecting albumin in the urine
so you should remember this um, all these these are all these are the questions of why why these are commonly asked now lastly the test for chyluria so chyluria is when there is presence of chyle in the urine and generally it occurs the chyle is present in the lymphatic system of the body and uh, the chyle chyluria can be seen because of conditions like filariasis then there is lymphatic obstruction due to uh, which are area bankrupt causing filariasis or if there are abdominal tumors which are compressing the lymphatics so when there is obstruction of lymphatics there will be lymphatic dilatation there is system and then it also contain albumin so test for albumin will be positive and how do we detect chyle so uh, when we centrifuge it then the supernatant is clear and uh, it contains fat droplets we can see them in the microscopy also in the chyle urea the color of the urine is milky colored it is milky colored and how do we detect we confirm that it is chyle we mix this urine with equal amount of ether chloroform mixture and it uh, this ether chloroform this dissolves the chyle and the urine clears out so by this we can confirm that it, that it is uh, chyle urea so the reagent that we used for uh, uh, diagnosing chyle urea are ether and chloroform so this you should remember so these were the uh, i uh, try to cover all the five questions which are asked in the test for proteins and if any other question is left then you can ask in the comment section and your feedback is most welcome thank you very much